that's just the same size, that behaves in exactly the same way when it gets pings from other neurons. It sends out pings just as the brain cell would have. So the other neurons don't know anything's changed. Okay, I've just replaced one of your brain cells with this little piece of nanotechnology. Would you still be conscious? Yeah. Now you can see where this argument's going. Yeah, so if you replaced all of them. As I replace them all, at what point do you stop being conscious? Well, people think of consciousness as this, like, ethereal thing that exists maybe beyond the brain cells. Yeah, well, people have a lot of crazy ideas. <laughs> <laughs> um, people don't know what consciousness is, and they often don't know what they mean by it. Mm. And then they fall back on saying, well, I know it because I've got it, and I can see that I've got it. And they fall back on this theatre model of the mind, which I think is nonsense. What do you think of consciousness as, if you had to try and define it? Is it Because I think of it as just like the awareness of myself, I don't know. I think it's a term we'll stop using. Suppose you want to understand how a car works. Well, you know some cars have a lot of oomph, and other cars have a lot less oomph. Like, an Aston Martin's got lots of oomph, mm. and a little Toyota Corolla doesn't have much oomph. But oomph isn't a very good concept for understanding cars. Um, if you want to understand cars, you need to understand about electric engines or petrol engines and how they work. Mm. And it gives rise to oomph, but oomph isn't a very useful explanatory concept. It's a kind of essence of a car. It's the essence of an Aston Martin. Mm. But it doesn't explain much. I think consciousness is like that. And I think we'll stop using that term. But I don't think there's anything, any reason why a machine shouldn't have it. If your view of consciousness is that it intrinsically involves self-awareness, then the machine's got to have self-awareness. 